Welcome to the stunning Spanish city of Córdoba. Located in south-central Spain, Córdoba is a place well worth your time. I did this as a day trip from Seville, which took about an hour to get to by train. You can also come here as a day trip from Malaga. It also takes about an hour by train. Welcome to another warm, sunny day in Spain. Today, I am exploring Cordova, a beautiful city in Andalusia. The main attraction here and the main reason that I wanted to come is for the Mosque Cathedral. It has a ton of history. It looks incredible and I'm super excited to explore, but there are a few other spots to check out as well. So today I'm going to take you with me as we get to know Cordoba and what makes it such a, a popular place. So let's go. I started my day at the Alcazar of the Christian Monarchs. The word Alcazar is used to describe Spanish palaces and fortresses that were built during the Moorish occupation between the 8th and the 15th centuries. So you may have heard the word before if you've been to Seville, for example. This palace was built in 1328, and early in its history, it was one of the main residences of Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon. You can explore the castle, head up to the tower, and then my personal favorite, wander the stunning gardens. We packed a mid-morning snack and ate it in the shade of the orange trees here. After powering up with a snack, it was on to the main attraction, the Mosque Cathedral of Córdoba. The Great Mosque was constructed in 785 AD. It was expanded multiple times up until the late 10th century, where at its largest, it could accommodate 40,000 worshippers. The mosque was converted into a cathedral in 1236. But unlike many of the other cathedral to mosque conversions that you may have seen around Andalusia, this one retained much of the structure and style of the mosque, and instead added a huge ornate nave in the center of the mosque cathedral. It is one of the most breathtaking places I have visited in Spain, maybe ever. <laughs> and I highly recommend either grabbing the audio guide or going with a tour guide. There is a lot of history in these walls. While you're near the cathedral, head across the Puente Romano, or the Roman Bridge. It was originally built during the first century BC, and it's thought that this was one of the main roads that helped to connect Rome with the port in Cadiz. The bridge has been reconstructed many times since then, including when the Moors rebuilt it with 16 arches, two of which are still original. On the far side of the bridge, you can get some incredible views back over the Mosque Cathedral. Be sure to leave time to explore some of the other parts of the city. The old town is full of stunning courtyards. So wonderful, in fact, that each May, there's a courtyard festival, where you can visit some of the historical courtyards in the old town and see people's flower displays. For lunch or dinner, take a walk through the Victoria Gardens until you reach Mercado Victoria. The market structure dates back to 1877, when it was used as a stall at the Cordoba Fair. The walls were added later and it was converted into a covered market hall. There are all types of food vendors here, as well as a bar and some outdoor seating. For even more history, head into the center of the city to discover the Roman temple ruins. Uncovered in the 1950s, when the city began building work on expanding the city hall, work was halted when they found these ruins. The temple has been reconstructed from the ruins, and it's completely free to have a look.
Nearby the temple is a beautiful plaza that reminded me a lot of Plaza Mayor in Madrid, except without the crowds. Plaza de la Corredera is home to tons of tapas bars and small restaurants with outdoor seating, where you can have a cold beer in the sunshine or a little bit of food in the evening if you're staying longer in Cordoba. For a more bustling plaza, grab a seat on one of the benches in Plaza de las Tendillas. There are usually buskers playing music, bars and restaurants full of people that don't really close for siesta like the ones in Corredera. And you can continue your walk from here to a few more places like Palacio de la Merced and the gardens across the street with the same name. Through the park, you can see Torre de la Malmuerta, one of the entrances through this section of the walled city. It's free to go to the top and is usually open during the day. I hope you enjoyed exploring Cordoba with me. This city is an absolute gem. And even in early September when I visited and tourists were flooding the streets of Seville, it was calm and quiet here in Cordoba. If you're spending more time in the city, be sure to check out my extended travel guide on my blog, which is linked in the pinned comment below, as well as in the description. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you next time.